Good morning, fifth grade. Today we're going to continue reading in our novel, The Birch Bark House. Before we get started, we have a quick write. It says, describe a time when you were hungry. How were you able to solve your problem? Press pause when you write down your answer and play when you're ready for the focus question. Our focus question for today is how is Amakius' family able to survive extreme hunger? What theme does this chapter teach about survival in general? Our vocabulary words for today are reliance, and that's when you depend or trust on someone. This little boy is relying on his father. The next one is desperation. And that's when you feel dejected um, or like you cannot go on. This girl has a feeling of desperation. She cannot get out from under those dark clouds. And then the last word is optimism. And that's when you feel hopeful or confident about the future. These glasses are an example of optimism. Even though it's storming outside, the person is choosing to look on the bright side of things, choosing to be hopeful about the time that they have with their family. We're going to read pages 177 through 181, and we're going to use our CSPS strategy. Let's get ready to read on page 177. The day dawned pure and cold. Nicomis and Mama mixed up some water with a thin paste of acorn flour left from the night before. Day Day came in with a fish so tiny and poor looking that in spite of their hunger, everyone laughed out loud while he lifted it proudly into the air. Everyone, that is, except Mama. She just rested her eyes a little more softly on her husband than usual and went back to her beadwork. Amakias, ready to do her part, dressed in her warmest clothes, wrapped links of rabbit skin around her feet, put moccasins over them, and then, Andag on her shoulder, went to look for the squirrel caches. We'll stop right there because we have information about our character and our setting. In box 1A, you would write, Amakias dressed in warm clothes to go out into the woods with Andag to search for food. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. And for the quote, we would write down this quote on page 177. Amakias, ready to do her part, dressed in her warmest clothes, wrapped links of rabbit skin around her feet, put moccasins over them, and then Andag on her shoulder went to look for the squirrel caches. Press pause to write down the quote and play when you're ready for the setting. And we know that it is a, in box 2A, we would write, it is a cold day in the middle of winter. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. We would write down this quote on page 177. The day dawned pure and cold. Press pause to write down the quote and play when you're ready to keep reading. We're at the bottom of page 177. Although she had fished with Nokomis, this was the first time Omakias had ventured into the woods since the day she had entered the cabin. On that day, she had followed the sickness inside and determined to do battle with the evil spirit of disease. She had lost her beloved Niwi. Now she decided she would not lose any of her family to the weakness of hunger. She would find food somewhere. Dizziness overcame her. Her knees felt watery and her blood ran thin. She paused, holding on to a tree, and made her way towards the woods beyond. First, she had passed Old Tallow's place, and she narrowed her eyes at the path and stepped forward with determined quickness, prepared not to stop until Andek told her where to find more nuts and acorns. She didn't reckon on the yellow dog. He was there in her path as she neared Old Tala's cabin. She wouldn't look at him, she decided, but she couldn't help remembering the words his look had given her last summer. Wait until next time. I'll get you then. I'll get you when no one is around. 
What could he do to her? Even in her weakness, she would be mentally stronger. She would show him no fear. But as though he sensed the truth of her condition, and not the de determined pluck of her heart, the yellow dog stepped forward. As always, he snarled and then retreated when Omakius grabbed a stick. When she brandished the stick, however, a spinning haze of brilliant dots flooded up before her eyes. Suddenly, it was as though she stepped over the edge of a black cliff. She stumbled to the ground. The yellow dog lunged forward. Andag screamed and tore with his beak at the dog's eyes. But the dog was eager at last to get the better of a human. As the clumsiest hunting dog of Voltella's pack, he needed to stand tall over something, even if only a sick little girl. Amakius groped for his stick, but suddenly the yellow dog had it in his teeth. He growled, worried the stick as though he caught a gopher, then dropped it with an eager bite, tore into the blanket that felt from her arm. With a vicious lunge, he bit Omakius above the wrist and jumped back, eyes blazing with cowardly triumph. Omakius tried to yell, but her voice stuck in her throat, a squeak. She felt a rushing blackness overwhelm her again, tried to throw herself upward, tried to growl back and challenge the dog with excitement, though the dog realized he had her at his mercy at last. He jumped forward again. This time fell upon her leg and bit deep. Amakius heard a loud scream, her own scream, and pain blotted her sight, then as she swirled into the dark. We'll stop right there because we have the problem. In box 3A you can write, Oltalo's yellow dog senses Amakius's weakness and attacks her. He bites her wrist and her leg. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. And you can write down this quote on page 79 or the quote on page 78. It says, With a vicious lunge, he bit Omakius above the wrist and jumped back, eyes blazing with cowardly triumph. Or you can write, He jumped forward again. This time, he fell upon her leg and bit deep. Omakius heard a loud scream, her own scream, and pain blotted her sight then as she swirled into the dark. Press pause to write down your quote and play when you're ready to keep reading. She woke a moment later in Old Tallow's arms. What happened? Nearby, the yellow dog cringed and tried to slink away from Old Tallow's glare. Seeing that Amakius was all right, Old Tallow carefully put the girl down. With a swift, bear-like swipe, she grabbed the dog and held him by the scruff of the neck with one hand. He whimpered and snarled at Amakius as if to say, She made me do it. Old Tallow shook her head sadly and lifted her axe. Ignoring Amakius, who panted weakly in the snowy ground, Old Tallow spoke to her dog as she would to a human. Sadly and firmly, holding him by the neck, she told the dog what he had done. Didn't I warn you? Didn't I say to you, didn't I tell you many times, you must never hurt this one. Yes, Nadai, you look at me now with pleading eyes, but I spared you many times before. Each time I spared your life, I always told you what would happen if you were so foolish again. Now, my foolish friend, you must die. With that, Otalo brought the blunt end of her axe down on the yellow dog's head. He crumpled to the ground. Aye, my auntie, the yellow dog had hated her, perhaps even meant to kill her. But Omakius hadn't counted on such a cruel and sudden end to the dog's cowardly life. Old Tala's justice was harsh. Her sentence was carried out in an instant. But that didn't mean that her heart was hard or that she didn't mourn for her friend. It just meant that Omakius was more important. The last of Amakia saw of the yellow dog, he was bundled in old Tala's arms. The strong old woman was walking away, and in her step there was a sadness of parting, with an old but dangerously foolish friend. Amakia got slowly to her feet, wobbled forward, 
and knew she would have to return to the cabin. She still wasn't strong enough to hunt for food. With Andex encouragement, she made it back to the door and fell through her vision darkening. Her stomach creaked so empty it stuck in the back of her body. She needed Grandma's help to dress the bites that throbbed and stung. They must have food. They must have food. Soon they must eat, she knew, or they would all lie in the ground with the two who had gone before. We'll stop right there because we have information about the solution. In box 4A, you would write, Old Tallow killed the yellow dog just like she said she would if she ever attacked Amakius. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the quote. And for the quote, you can write down this last sentence on page 180. With that, Old Tallow brought the blunt end of her axe down on the yellow dog's head. He crumpled to the ground. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the paragraph. It says, what challenge does Amakius face? What does her response reveal about her as a person? 